ever wanted to learn more about the people behind the speedruns? Right here, it's this one, My Insane Pace. My Insane Pace coming at you again. This is ALT Insider, the second episode of the My Insane Idea bonus series here. We got a special one here today. I got a very special guest here that knows a thing or two about a thing or two about putting on epically huge events, and his name is Eden All. And I just got very lucky here. Um, you know, my Discord is still pretty small. They got a, some cool people in there. We talk, we talk, you know, try to keep the conversations going every day. But somehow Eden All ended up in my Discord, and he is just the right person to talk about putting on events since he is the uh, director of a very epic event himself, ESA, which I'm sure if you listen to this show, you know exactly what that is. But I gotta say, before we get to this bonus episode, I first I would say thanks for all the feedback I've been receiving. Um, I get stuff from, I got stuff, some stuff from saying people that want to be volunteers to people that say it won't work because blah, 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 blah. Um, all that stuff helps, you know, and, and, and it'll help the event happen someday. If the event does happen someday, it'll be because of feedback like that. So if you have anything you want to add to the, to the discussion, even if it's negative, as long as you try, you know, negative stuff is welcome as long as you add a reason, right? Don't say this thing sucks, you suck. I mean, that's fine, I guess. But it's better if you have a negative point and then you have maybe a solution or just this is maybe too negative. There's nothing to fix this, so this is why it won't happen, and we can work on that. That stuff helps. So if you want to join the conversation, please feel free to join the Mind Saint Pace Discord. Always good conversations there. Mind Saint Ideas kind of taken over the conversation there, as you might uh, as you might uh, imagine. Um, but we have the Mind Saint Pace Discord on Twitter at ALT Insider FY. My messages are open, DMs are open, should I say? They'll feel free to slide in there. And email is James at mindsafepace.com. I'm ready for it all. Let's make the you know my, my insane idea is 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 if it does happen, it's going to be because of you know the awesome help of the whole community that wants it to happen as well as much as I do. So yeah, I'm ready to hear it all. But let's get to it. The episode number two of this series, the director of ESA, Eden All. Um, we get into, of course, first we set the stage with learning about his speedrun history. He has a GDQ run, GDQ run under his belt and a few couches as well. Then we learn a little bit about what ESA is, some of the struggles he faced, what he did exactly. And then to round it up, I cut, try to learn as much as I can from him about, you know, how I can apply his experience, uh, with ESA and some of the, the troubles they face and their kind of evolution of ESA into my insane idea. And actually, you'll see he proposed a pretty big idea for change to the format, as different than what I said last week. That'll help to help make it happen, in his opinion. So yeah, be sure to stick around for that if that sounds like something you're interested in. A of course, normal interview, normal episode will be there here on Thursday if you listen to this live. If you're not listening to this live, you can listen to whatever episode you want because they're all archived there for you. So without further ado, let's get to it. This is the epic Lee Awesome, director of ESA, Eden All. Enjoy. All right, guys, very special guest here today. We're, it's a bonus episode here talking about my my, my guest's history with speedrunning. Also, some stuff he's done in speedrunning that has to do with my insane idea, the episode we talked about last week. If you haven't listened to that, I recommend you check that out first because you'll know what we're going with this. But let me say first, hello to my guest, Eden All. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Happy to have you on here. We've been excited. We've been kind of going back and forth on my Discord here about this uh, my insane idea. So it's nice to talk to you in person here. Uh, t- to uh, you know, just talk about things about what's what it is, what will happen if it's possible. So first, though, I want to get people. Some people out there might not know who you are. Some people, I know most people do, but just for the few people that might not know who you are, can you please tell us your speedrunning history, kind of what you what you're all about in the speedrunning world? Yeah, sure. I, I, I disagree with you that a lot of people know who I am. I think I'm kind of anonymous still because I don't stream mm. at all, uh, not anymore at least. Uh, but what I'm what what people mostly know me, know me for is uh, ESA, European Speedrunner Assembly, which I've been a part of since the startup in 2012. Yeah, so I think you should you talk. Let me, let me stop you there. You talk stuff short though. You, be, you have the GDQ run, right? Yeah, I, I have, I've commentated one uh, one run, and I had a run in 2015. Yeah. So yeah. So let's get what what exactly is ESA for the even less people that don't know what that is. Oh, uh, ESA is just like. It, it, it's pretty much uh, GDQ, but but in Europe, um, some different core values, but they're it's shifting over, over a couple of years. You know, the core values of the, of the events shift. It's not as much. Um, it used to be less charity focused, and now it's a little bit more charity focused. But it's not as much charity focused as uh, GDQ. Uh, it's it's just. Um, a nice alternative for people that live in Europe and want to experience a speedrunning event. Mm-hmm. 
And I guess I want to know, like, what kind of was the was the creation of ESA? Was it just to like, a you know, America has GDQ, that's cool, let's do the same thing here, or what kind of was the creation reason? Oh, it was exactly like that. Um, it was just exactly like that. It was um, at some point initially, it was supposed to be European games done quick, but uh, it turned out like. It, it didn't work out that way. So mm -hmm. then it became okay. Let's do, um, let's do a Swedish uh, a speedrunning marathon with just Swedes. Uh, and it was the idea came from uh, Fresu Man, uh, who's a, an old, old time now retired speedrunner. Uh, he was very active in the early SDA days, mm -hmm. uh, mainly focused on retro, and he was involved with a small local gaming unit. Um, gaming organization in the middle of Sweden. Uh, there was a lot of speedrunners in that town, uh, town of Kovde, where ESA started and where it was held for the first couple of years. So it was like a, nat a natural starting point. It was a people, people wanted to do a marathon. They were influenced by Classic Games Done Quick. Fresiman had been at Classic Games Done Quick. He was the only Swede. Uh, I don't recall if there were any other Europeans there, maybe. A few, but he was uh, one of the people who attended the absolute first um, speedrunning marathon. Awesome! Yeah, um, my goal is to interview everyone that was at uh, Classic Games Done Quick. So hopefully, he will agree sometime in the future to do that, even though he's retired. Uh, so yeah, how did you get involved though with ESA in the beginning? Were you kind of one of the first people that had the idea, or what kind of? How did you jump on board? I jump. Uh, uh, I was always very interested in tech. Uh, I still am. Um, so w w when discussion started at uh, the SDA, SDA forum, um, I quickly jumped on uh, to work with tech uh, for the event. And I went up to to Hovde to meet the guys. Uh, we talked a little about what we wanted to achieve, um, how we wanted to achieve it, and divide out um, responsibilities. And much of the infrastructure and venue, it was already in place because they had been doing continuous uh, regular meetups there, uh, but they hadn't really figured out the tech aspect. So that's uh, that's where I came in. I didn't have like a huge repertoire of, of speed games back then. I only really had one game that I was learning at the time, uh, but I was still very interested in speed running. Had been watching uh, forever. I actually did my first real speed running attempt as early as two thousand and three, but that never really took off. Um, and so that that was it. I was on board. There were a lot of guys. I think there were like ten guys uh, at the first startup meeting. So did you kind of were you in this community already, or just kind of said, "Hey, I know you might not know me, but I want to help"? Or something? how did they know who you were? I guess I was in the speedrunning community. Uh, I I um, joined the SDA forum in 2011. Okay. I had been lurking lurking forever, and we had just been talking back and forth. Uh, there um okay i see so i didn't i didn't i had never met these guys i had seen some of them stream uh, i guess they had seen me stream uh but uh, i didn't know anyone so it was, it was right, like it was a risky risky move but it, i think it paid off yeah especially back then there was it's, now it's so normal to meet people you, you know online but back then it wasn't that as normal uh for sure yeah yeah you know back then there really wasn't any central hub to find speed runs um Twitch didn't exist in 2011. I think it was started, or maybe it was started in late 2011. So Twitch didn't exist. People streamed on Ustream or just in TV. Yeah. <laughs> um, and what you did to find streams, there, there was this. I think the page still exists. Uh, it's, uh, it's hosted on SDA or it's linked there at least. It's called Wooty, which was um, an aggregate for streams. That's where we went to find uh, find streams. Uh, I I think it still exists. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll send you a link afterwards. Yeah, it's interesting. So the, the the Twitch before the Twitch, I guess. Uh, so yeah, yeah. when you're, you 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 get there, you're saying, okay, we're gonna do this, you know, ESA thing. And so from how much of the planning, you said some of the stuff was already in place, right? So you didn't have to plan it from the ground up. So was your side just planning the tech side of things and the equipment side of things? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I wasn't involved in the over overall planning. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just I was just doing tech. Um, that was that was my job. I didn't do anything with uh, marketing. I didn't do anything with the finances. I didn't do anything with the venue. I didn't. It was just tech, and with tech I mean the stream, uh, getting TVs there, computers like 
that was scheduling that was some, someone else i just did tech okay so it's, it's still a pretty big job though i mean like so you have to somehow there has to be some funds to get the equipment and stuff like that right so you guys already had how did you get the money to start that kind of st- the side of things that side of things uh you know there wasn't like money in speedrunning back then and no one really thought about oh speedrunning can get big and there will be there will be money it was just it was a fun hobby that you re- everyone were really passionate about wanting to share it uh so all the equipment for all the i'd say all the early speedrunning events it it was like bringing your console over to a friend's house you bring your pc over to uh, your friend's house to have a small land party that was like how equipment were uh, are organized for all the events, GDQs uh, okay. included, for the first like three years. Mm-hmm. People, th- there would be lists and Google forms where you would fill in. Oh, I can bring my Super Nintendo. I can bring my Genesis. Oh, I have a capture card. I have a pretty decent PC. I can bring here. <laughs> so all the equipment was just sourced from various people coming to the event uh, who had these um, these equipment. This equipment. Uh, right. Except for the big CRTs, because they had them already in place in Kovda. Yeah. Okay. So then let's let's kind of fast forward a little bit. So the event, the first year event went off. How, how would you how would you rate it overall? The first you know the first DSA ever that you helped was it was it a smashing success? Was it a small success? Was it you know some things you wish you could do better? How did it, how did it go? I think it was a smashing success. It was uh, one of the best events I've been to for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just this ex- amazing experience. Um, one thing that was very different is that the marathon was fairly short. It wasn't a week long event. It was three days. Uh, but we were there for the entire week. So we had the weekend. Then we have Monday, Tuesday, um, Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's, that's right. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, we had all, we had all this time to hang out and get to know each other. Uh, so people taught each other speed runs. It was a very different event you can't really compare the early ESAs and the early GDQs to, to the modern ones because the new events are so focused on the stream uh-huh. um, or as, at least when you're very involved with them you, you you're focused on the stream uh, but but the core of the events are still getting there and getting to know people and hanging out learning new speed runs sharing sharing your love for speed runs sharing ideas sharing knowledge Pretty much that that's what it was and it's kind of very different nowadays for sure than, than that well from what i've heard i've never been to one but so let's talk about the, the evolution then because you continue to stay on board esa becomes an annual thing uh so how did you get how were you more involved with the planning for the second esa and stuff like that yeah yeah absolutely um Fressy man who did most of the heavy lifting uh for the first year um he had basically retired already at that point. Um, he had a family, two kids. Uh, he was very busy with uh, his university studies, so he just couldn't couldn't keep up. And I mean, there were a lot of people involved that all said, "We don't want the event to die. We want to do it again. We want yeah. to keep growing." Uh, and I just naturally took command. And command, I guess. No one said, "Okay, Ednal, you're going to do this." Um, I said, I can help with this and that, and I can take the lead in, in these uh, these areas. And there was there were other guys doing scheduling. There were other guys, local guys, dealing with the venue again in Kovde, and I took the responsibility for uh, the overall overall planning, which I still do today. Yeah, awesome. So that's, you kind of just self self. Uh, you you said yourself, I'll kind of I can handle this myself and kind of be the leader for the ESA. Yeah, uh, I was a very informal leader. Uh, back yeah, not then, my boss was... or anything, but yeah, <laughs> no. yeah. Okay, so then you know, so then you stayed at the same venue, so that kind of takes the the problem of choosing a venue out. But let's let's fast forward a little bit to when ESA changes a little bit. So can you tell me about how it changed to not being at that same event to to where how it kind of changed to be at DreamHack or whatever? Uh, you 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 know, um, DreamHack was kind of a fluke. Um, it was just one guy uh, who tweeted at DreamHack saying, hey, you guys should have speedruns. And they were like, yeah, <laughs> sure. You want to do it? Yeah. Uh, and it carried on from there. No, <laughs> it's not harder than that. <laughs> okay, um, so it wasn't like you're a great right, idea. Right, right place, right time. No, it, it wasn't my idea at all. Okay. Um, 
but we thought it would be thought it would be a good idea because ESA was only once a year, and if we got a dream hack, we can do it more times. Uh, and it carried on, just carried on from there. Um, we did, we've done some fun stuff at DreamHack. Every every event's been different. Uh, it's been growing. It's been some years are better than others. Um, the so time for for DreamHack uh, is unfortunate for us because it's very close to ESA, uh -huh. and it's also very close to SGDQ. Yeah, uh, and for the Winter events, it's pretty close to HDQ, so, e and it's only three day event, and good luck finding a hotel. Uh, there's no hotels in, uh, a 50 kilometer radius around the venue. So it's, uh, it's not very accommodating for international guests. Uh, okay, that's unfortunate then. Okay, so then, so how about the change? So you, you said, you, so I, I was confused myself. So you had DreamHack. ESA event, and you still had the other ESA twice, twice a year, basically, right? Um, ESA is only it's only real now when we have shifted to doing it twice a year. Okay. Uh, up until now, it's only been once uh, during the summer because because people, all, all the Europeans, most of the Europeans that go to speedrunning events, they go to AGQ in January, uh, myself included. Um, it's just very easy to get there from from Europe, so it doesn't. We didn't feel like it made sense to try and do something small, um, but now we changed our mind. Yeah, so let's talk about that. So now you're going to do something a little bit different with ESA, right? It's not going to be a dream hack. It's not going to be at the other place. It's going to be a whole new place, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we felt like uh, a small... I mean, the, the idea really came from when we, we have a few tech guys and a few people... Uh, involved in ESA, um, met up for a weekend uh, at this hotel earlier this year uh, just to prepare for the big main event. And we realized, like, this is a good time. This event's pretty good. It's pretty cheap. Uh, maybe we should do an event here. That's more like the, the old days where there's not so much focus on the charity and the stream. It's more like hanging out. So we decided to, let's, let's try that. So that's where ESA Winter came from. Um, and at the same time, doing a DreamHack event is very, very exhausting. Uh, takes a lot of resources. E even if it's only a three-day event, you still spend the exact uh, same amount of time planning it uh, okay. uh, as a big event. So why not do our own small event? Ah, uh, that makes sense. So, and, so you said the place was kind of the location was already kind of you kind of chose the location just because it's a good. You thought it was a good place for it. Like there was no kind of, you didn't have any lot of choices, right? You just had this. This place is good. Let's do it here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. For winter, that's absolutely the the idea. Okay, cool. Okay, so then I guess like I guess let's kind of shift gears on to what you thought of my my crazy idea, which is not obviously not ESA at all. So very different than ESA, uh, but you know it's still a live event with speedrunning going on. So when you first heard of my my idea, what did you what did you think? You know what did you think when you heard the my insane idea? This is never gonna work. <laughs> that was my that was honestly my first idea. I mean, um, but then. I quickly shifted to like this is not going to work without some tweaks. Mm. Um, I think there's a few problems with this type of event. It's kind of a catch twenty two event where you need the you need to attract viewers and sponsors, mm -hmm. but you don't have a name, uh, and you can't have a name unless you have a, an event or some celebrities. Mm -hmm. you, you see where I'm going? Yeah, exactly. Chicken or the egg? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, but I think there are ways to work around that. Um, I was a few days ago uh, off the moth. Um, Dark Cider Speedrunner posted something on Reddit, like where he offered. Uh, he's also on the Mindset Pace Discord, where he posted this bounty for uh, for beating. Dark Soul, uh, Dark Siders records, mm. uh, and just lear learning the run. Um, I think the reception for such an unknown game, even though it's a great game, uh, it was massive. It was people were really excited excited about that idea, and I haven't really seen that excitement 
about speed runs and, and cash, uh, cash prices before. That, that was very, very interesting to me. And I think that that's an in, indicator of that. My, I say, uh, you're sorry, your insane idea <laughs> yeah. might work. Yeah. I, I think, I think there's such a, you know, I, I think, of course, all, all you said is correct. Like the chicken and egg thing. Let me get to that first. That is for sure true. And I think that's why the, the event needs to have the stars of the speedrunning world, even though they're not, you know, even the the top of the speedrunning world stars are not the biggest esports stars, right? They're very different levels. Like if you said the biggest speedrunner right now is maybe Trihex, I guess. So, that's, so he would probably be the top of the grade, right? I I, th- I think there are different tiers or there are different types of speedrunners. There are speedrunners that are, if you're just looking at pure speedrunners, mm-hmm. then I would say someone like Cheese, mm-hmm. yeah, or it, it's um, probably the biggest one uh, right now. But if you look, there, there's a lot of speedrunners who have managed to transition into variety streaming, and they're much much bigger than Cheese. Ever was. I mean, even when she did his world record run, he's nowhere near uh, the big variety slash speedrunner streamers mm-hmm. like Trihex, like Elias, who pulls in thousands of viewers when they stream. Yeah. So I think to get, and that's why I said I have to have some of those, I have to have the biggest stars there. That's why I even, you know, cheese and those kind of people. But to get them there, that's why I think I need the prize money, right? But to get the prize money, I got to have sponsors. So it's like, you're right. There's a, <laughs> there is chicken and egg kind of problem here, right? Because to, to get the big people, to get viewers, I need big streamers. To get big streamers, I think I have to have prize money, right? I don't think no one's going to come for this unknown event, right? I, I agree. I think that's going to be very, very, very tough. Uh, um, but that's why I think you need, I think to increase the rate uh, to, to give the event a chance of being successful, I think the event has to be attached to um, a con or um, or an already existing event. Mm-hmm. Like, if you talk to DreamHack, uh, let's say DreamHack Austin, that's in July, I think. Yeah, it's it's in July. You got all, you got some speedrunners local that might be able to help you. Um, or if you go for a Comic Con, perhaps they do speed running panels. Mm-hmm. So there's there's a crowd for that would be interested in in watching speed runs. Um, Twitch Con, perhaps lots of speed runners there. Yeah, Lot, lots of people that would that would uh, uh, enjoy to watching something like this. Maybe get um, try and get some big profile streamer to be the host instead of a speedrunner. Um, no, that's, oh, that's a good idea. Like someone who already pulls in. I mean, this is probably a bad example now when he's uh, uh, he's he's not around anymore. But if you had Dr. Disrespect mm-hmm. hosting the event, he's the kind of energetic person you'd you'd need to pull in the 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 crowd that's not as into speedrunning. Um Pair that with a dream hack where he's already going or a comic con or something like that. Mm-hmm. I think that's, that might be one way of getting the event, uh, event running. Or you can look to do it together with, uh, with, uh, SGDQ. I think AG, AGDQ is too early. I don't know if the GDQ guys would be open to mm-hmm. do, doing, um, su- such tournament. After they shared the stream or before they shared the stream, because there you already have a a group that uh, uh, an audience, yeah, that are gonna understand the game, uh, that are gonna probably gonna be very hyped for the game, yeah. Because if you look at GDQs and ESA or other events, there are a few games that they 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 fill the room, even if it might not even be a race, it might be just just uh, a single run, but some runs fill rooms. If you have that already, um, I think you're halfway there. And so I guess I, I, th- I agree with you on all, all points. I agree that it would be way easier to do it as attached to something else that's not its own thing. I mean, it saves on so many costs. You can't even, you know, you can't even imagine how many costs that would save, right? But here's the question I have for you with that. And if you, maybe you might not know the answer. I don't know. But if I did an event like that, would – obviously, this event needs sponsors. It doesn't work without sponsors, right? 
So would a sponsor be on board with being this little part of a bigger thing, right? I guess let's say like Twitch wants to, okay, Twitch says, yeah, we're, we're on board. We want to sponsor it. We, we love the idea. Would, would they still be on board if it's its own, it's a part of something small, a uh, bigger, right? So it's a part of DreamHack or it's a part of GDQ. Would, would that even be, is that even in the realm of possibility? You know what I mean? I think that would be a, I, I think that would be positive, only positive. Um, oh, okay. Because uh, at the end, what does the sponsor look for? They look for exposure or endorsement of their products. Um, and for Twitch, what's Twitch's product? Streets. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they, I, I, I'm just talking from uh, experience and, and what I think. I don't know if any of this is true, but I don't think Twitch would sponsor an event that wasn't streamed. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, streaming that was always a part of the idea. I know. I, I don't think I, I made that clear enough in my first uh, talk about. It. Yes, the, the the whole thing would be a stream for sure. Yeah, because then you have another set of problems. Like, what's where are you going to put the focus? Are you going to put the focus on the stream, or are you going to put the focus on the crowd? Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if you have a small crowd, you can still have an amazing stream. And if your if your reach is the stream then the sponsors are that's what they're gonna look for they don't care if there's a thousand people in in the room when there are ten thousand watching yeah and can watch again on youtube and can talk about it on social media they're looking for the the engagement there um but then there are different types of sponsors there are sponsors like twitch they care about the stream uh, most likely there are sponsors uh who have a product that they want to promote uh promote it and product they want to sell. Um, that kind of sponsor might not be willing to go in with money. They might want to go in and sponsor you with... Equipment stuff, right? Equip- equipment or price items or prices. Maybe you should look into... that. That's something to consider. Uh, a lot of companies will be much more willing to give you their merchandise as prices. So let's say a gaming computer from Intel or Asus. Uh-huh. Uh, and for the winner of the race, you get, you, you, I know you said 10,000 or 5,000, but maybe you get $1,000 and a PC. Okay. A ga- new capture, capture PC. Yeah. I guess the, the thing about the money, right? Like every, it's, it's not all about the money, but it kind of is because if you don't have the, well, Here's the thing. If it's part of GDQ, I think the the prize money can be less and it'd still be pretty hype. But if it's not a part of another event and you have this kind of thousand dollar prize, does that does that make cheese want to come, right? Does that make thousand dollars to them is what something they make in a weekend on a stream, right? I have no idea how much a streamer makes. Um, yeah, but you I know, it's, it's I think it's much lower than that. I think streamers just it, it's very, it fluctuates a lot uh, with with donations suddenly you get a thousand dollars thousand dollars per week and and then you end up in a drought for two weeks i I don't know but i think that's like that's how it's like yeah but like so but you know like i said the invitational idea so we get the big streamers like uh, for someone like i said let's say we did make a man x and i said caleb hart he has a thousand subs for him in a thousand dollars is not a lot you know what i mean for sure so like that's why i think the prize money also in terms of be getting coverage from media coverage, right? Because is a thousand dollar prize a big deal? No, but a ten thousand dollar prize is a huge deal that Kotaku might want to talk about. Things like that, you know. That's that's what I was thinking with the prize money, right? Like, I think it Absolutely has to be agree. significant amount, you know. Absolutely agree with that. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a big cash prize will sure get attention from media. Yeah. So that's that's the that's the you know again the cut twenty two thing you said. So let's just say for the sake of it that I agree that the, the, the one of these events takes it on right. So like DreamHack or or GDQ or GDQ would probably be the ideal one. Um. Uh, so what kind of what kind of avenues does ESA do to get sponsors? Is it just the the calling someone up and say hey, what do you think about this? Or what kind of the what are the strategies to do, to get sponsorship? It's it's so very different. Um, most of the sponsors we have or are working working to attain, um, it's through relationships, which takes a lot of time to build up. Mm-hmm. Um, and you don't let's say some some sponsors are like they'd be willing to hop on anything. 
Um, the sponsors you want, uh, they won't hop in, hop in on anything. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. Smaller sponsors might. Um, and they, they might give you some free licenses for the products or a couple of t-shirts. Um, s- s- stuff that doesn't make much difference in the end. It's nice for the people there, uh, but it doesn't make or break the event. Mm. It doesn't make... Give, I, th- I think I lost my tra- train of thought here. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> a, a lot of sponsors, some sponsors that we work with, are we get in contact with them through someone we know. Um, I don't know if I can give you an example from uh, from last ESA. Yes, okay. I, I can. Um, we had one sponsor, uh, Sigma. You never heard of them, I'm yep. sure. It's, it's my employer. <laughs> okay. Uh, they just thought it, uh, it was uh, a good idea. It, it's the right type of people that would possibly want to come and work for an IT consultant company. Uh, so... And we're two people, me and uh, Sefir, uh, the excellent ninja, uh, who works for the company. So, And Sefir joined the company Sigma because he got involved in ESA. Okay. So that, that's how they see return, the return of investment. They can hire people that are IT consultants or programmers from these events. Uh, we got, we also had Elgato. And that's a contact we got from Moral, uh, who knows them from previous, uh, previous events he's done. Gaming Tuesday, for instance. Uh, they give, uh, or they provide Gaming Tuesday with prices and equipment. And they also provided ESA with, uh, equipment this year. For mm-hmm. example, the newly re- released Stream Deck, which is an amazing product, which we're, we are very happy to endorse because it helps us. Yeah. Uh, it's much harder to to get a sponsor that has a product you're not really all that excited about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and through Elgato, we got in contact with other sponsors, Corsair, Intel. So it's it's all about building personal relationships and delivering on your promises. Uh, yeah. We have royally messed up that in the past uh, with a sponsor. Uh, we didn't deliver what we promised, and therefore we're no longer working with them. In terms of like how many mentions you had or how many viewers you had or something like that? We, we promised that we would put them on our Twitch page. Uh, we would give shout outs to them. And it took like two days into the stream before we could start doing that uh, because okay. we had issues. And that's not okay. That's absolutely not okay. Um, so that's that's entirely on us. Uh, okay, I see what you mean, yeah. Okay, so I guess, yeah, it's, it's about building the relationships that obviously you have built over years of time of doing ESA, which is something that obviously I don't have right now. So that, that's definitely something to think about for that's sure. That's another catch, another yeah. catch 22. If you go, go to a con like DreamHack or Comic Con and say, I have this amazing idea. Um, this is the business plan. This is how it's going to work. We have everything figured out. We have these guys doing tech. Um, we have everything. We just need money uh, and a venue. And they're, they're going to say, where's your track record? <laughs> and you'll be like, Oops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And another example for sponsors. Um, are you familiar with gaming shares? Like DX Racers, uh, those kind of shares? I can look at it right now. No, I'm not, but I can look it up. Basically, it's uh, comfy shares for streamers and gamers. Okay. 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 Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. These kind of companies, on, on their pages, they normally have, the, have these uh, sponsorship forms, which you can submit if you want to get sponsored by them. And they'll ask you to fill in, well... I stream at this page. I have this Twitter following, um, this and that. Uh, and you'll send that in and you'll be looking to get a share in return, perhaps. Yeah. Or cash sponsorships. Um, most of the time, they, they will completely ignore your first email. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they say, okay, thank you for your submission. You can do another one in three months. If you do another request in three months... They'll have your information saved and they'll see that they'll have two reference points of growth. So if they can see, even if you're a small streamer, they'll see growth and they'll contact you. Makes sense. That's, um, that's also a big part of sponsorship. If you, if the, the company you want to 
to sponsor your event doesn't bite on the first try, don't give up. Keep going. Show growth. Mm -hmm. And they'll they'll listen. Yeah, I guess that that's the hardest thing is getting the first thing going, I guess, is the is the problem we're in here, right? Uh for sure. Yeah. So so maybe the idea for my my insane RD is I I don't think it's impossible to get to get your foot in with DreamHack or a con mm -hmm. like a smaller start small. I mean start with uh like one game, I guess, would be a good starting point, right? Just have one, yeah, one, one, game one or two in. games. Maybe you can scramble funds to invite a few pro players and have them battle it out there, and then you have that to show to bigger sponsors later on and see, hey, we got growth, we got potential. Yeah, it's a good, I guess that's a good idea. If you do have, if you can put it as a part of something and only have one game, that makes it much less, much more easy to get because that's much less money for sure so that that's a good idea for sure um i talked to you know i sent an email to twitch about you know just to get the ball rolling hey i'm i'm want to do this and this is my this is my crazy idea what do you think about this what would it, what would it take what kind of information do you need to even ask about uh funding is what i sent the email what kind of you know sponsorship what kind of information do you need to even think about asking for that and sinister one uh who works at twitch for the speedrunning side of things wrote back and he's He's, he gave me the list of kind of things to work on, the things that I need to answer, you know, before that Twitch can even kind of, you know, start thinking about giving, throwing money at this idea. I guess the biggest one would be the estimated budget, right? So when you go to a sponsor and say, do, do you just, what do you ask for? Do you say, how much can you give? Or you say, we'd like this much, I guess I want to ask, you know? Because obviously I'm going to have this budget. I think it costs this much, but I need obviously to cover it with sponsors. But do I go to, do I go to a sponsor and says, hey, I need this much. Can you make it happen, or what do you do with that in that side of things? For an event like this, I I, I don't know. I don't know how how um, I would approach it. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you how we do it. Yeah, yeah. We have uh, we have prepared a sponsor deck where we list what um, opportunities there are to be a part of ESA, and there are a few different opportunities. Like if you just want to be a silent supporter or a small time supporter, where we slap on a logo somewhere uh, and you're now paying let's say a thousand dollars for a, a minor sponsorship and you, you get um, there you can expect the return to be worth a thousand dollars then we have different tiers like if you want a bigger tier you get a bigger share of voice you get additional perks you get perhaps you can throw in a video a commercial video embedded into the stream. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think what you need to do is just figure out those tiers, what you can, what you, what you or the event can offer the sponsor. Um, okay. The highest tier would probably be like presented by, or like a title sponsor would be my insane ID presented by Twitch. So that gets their name on the event mm -hmm. and also all lower tiers. Obviously, ESA has different, uh, different thing, things we can offer a potential sponsor, both in terms of on site uh, activation and off site activation. Yeah, since you have the the track record and say, hey, we get we we also a sponsor knows what they're getting with you, right? They can they know the average viewership and stuff like that, right? Yeah, um, that's something we provide with the, with the sponsor deck, like history of what we've done, growth uh, diagrams, not not too 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 bulky, but just enough for them to to flip over two pages and figure out, okay, this is what we can expect. Okay, I guess like I guess to sum it up, then I guess so. You're if if you were the the head of my insane idea, you're. I mean, let me go through what I think you're 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 saying, and let's make sure we're on the same page of what your strategy would be. So. Your strategy would be contact all the possible cons. So we're talking like, you know, TwitchCon, uh, you know, uh, ESA, another one. <laughs> I would actually ask you, GDQ, these places, and say, hey, are you interested in having uh, one short segment of a speedrunning tournament for money? And if they're on board, then I move forward with to sponsors saying, hey, I have DreamHacks going to have me or whoever is going to have me here. I could promise this these things. Would you like to sponsor it? Is that is that somewhere what you're saying here? Exactly. Mm. Exactly. 
uh, unless you unless, unless you want to do it in your own venue, uh, of course. I mean, that's the, that's what I want to do, but I think that that might be biting off too much that I can chew for the first time. I think you're right that if I started sl- small and do this one one or two games event, it might be it might make the first real solo event thing more doable for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, you can if you would go and do the event. It would be very different if you do it with with DreamHack or if you do it with a GDQ or if you do it with basically if you do it with a con or if you do it with a speedrunning event. Uh, mm-hmm. Those are two different approaches. That's true. That's true. Um, if but if you go with let's say if you go with DreamHack, then maybe DreamHack will take care of the the tech and the streaming for you, and mm-hmm. you'll you'll say I have this idea. We need three hours on the main stage. Maybe during because they have open hours at the main stage, the, and they would love to get fresh content there. Yeah, I guess I guess the final. I guess I learned a lot here. Thanks for coming on. I mean, that's why I come on to kind of learn as much as I can from you because I definitely want this thing to happen. And I know it's a long road and it's it's not an easy road, but I definitely want to work as hard as I can to make it happen because you obviously have some experience running a successful event in the SA. So. uh Definitely, thanks for coming on. I hope we can keep the talk going because I don't don't need your help in the future too as well. If it even you know to move this thing along for sure. Absolutely, I'm always happy to help and to bounce ideas. And I, th- and I think I think this is um, I think this I think your insane idea is going to happen. Uh, just question of when and where. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I absolutely so... think there. You, you'll get there. You'll get there with a ten thousand dollar prize pool. Uh, I really think so. Thanks, man. I really hope it's true, and uh, we'll see, I guess. But uh, where can people check out your stuff? I know you, you don't you said you don't Twitch any, you don't uh, stream anymore, but can people find you on Twitter or anything? Yeah, they can find me on Twitter. Uh, I think my handle is EdonLSDA, mm-hmm. keeping that old tag. <laughs> yeah, that shows your reasons. old school. <laughs> you showed your old school with SDA, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was the, the Twitch account was taken, so I can get the Edonol, Edonol there. Uh, oh, so that's too I, bad. I just kept it. Uh, or they can find me on the ESA Discord. There you go. And yeah, be sure to, obviously, ESA is awesome. So everyone, if you listen to this show, you know what ESA is, though. So yeah, this is the man that makes it happen. So yeah, thanks, Eden, all for coming to your advice. And I'll be sure to talk to you in, uh, uh, in the future for, as well. Thank you, James. It's a pleasure.